Good evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. I'm the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. Previously, I was a financial analyst and a financial journalist. Tonight, I'm reporting on an article by Fox News called Al-Qaeda Expansion in Libya, Part of Long-Term Terror Vision. Let's go through this briefly. Al-Qaeda's expansion in Libya following the successful terrorist attack on the U.S. consulate and CIA annex in Benghazi on September 11th is part of a long-term plan by Al-Qaeda senior leadership, according to a seasoned counterterrorism investigator. So to counter this disinformation, this long-term plan could not have been longer than two years because, according to Michael Scheurer, who was in charge of the task force to get bin Laden under Bush, uh, Gaddafi was hell on wheels against Al-Qaeda. Gaddafi had completely stopped in its tracks all Al-Qaeda activity in Libya and had fought a bitter war against uh, right-wing religious extremists in Libya in the 1990s and late 80s with a group called the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group. It's only because of NATO's destroying Libya's defenses that Al-Qaeda has obtained a foothold there. It has only been through the United States aiding and abetting the transfer of arms into Libya from Qatar, as was reported on December 5th in the New York Times, U.S. arms to rebels fall into jihadis' hands uh, by uh, five different New York Times reporters, including David Kirkpatrick, that this is uh, uh, possible to happen. <clears throat> so the culprit in Al-Qaeda obtaining a foothold in Libya is actually Fox News by not bringing these points out earlier. Now, I'm not suggesting that Libya did not need democratic reform, and I'm not taking sides on this issue. I'm simply trying to point out disinformation. Al-Qaeda's leader, uh, Ayman al-Sawahiri, has long had his sights on Libya, and it, what he devised long ago was a plan to send senior operatives from Pakistan and elsewhere into Libya to build up al-Qaeda's clandestine network. Tom Jocelyn, a senior fellow with Foundation for Defense of Democracies, told Fox News. Now, how could he devise long ago such a plan when al-Qaeda was completely uh, obliterated in Libya uh, for uh, a decade? The earliest he could advise his plan would have been after NATO began bombing Libya. Why is there no mention of this anywhere in this article? Why isn't there any balance to this article? Jocelyn, who is well known in the counterterrorism world for his drill down on Al Qaeda operatives, said the vacuum left after the attack in Benghazi has created another opening which has allowed the terrorist network to, quote, capitalize on the anti American momentum to show how they do have cards to play around the world, unquote. According to an analyst, August report by the Library of Congress, in conjunction with military analysts, at least two Al Qaeda operatives, Abu Anas al Libi and Abd al Basit Azuz, answer directly to Zawahiri. So here is a Wikipedia on Anas al Libi, and it says here in September of 2012, CNN reported that al Libi returned to Libya. So presumably, this poorly worded statement means that these two operatives are in Libya now. <clears throat> Jocelyn said a witch's brew of three basic elements now creates fertile ground in Libya for the establishment of a safe haven. They include those dispatched by Al-Qaeda senior leadership in Pakistan, the Al-Qaeda affiliate in North Africa known as Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, and local militias which are sympathetic to Al-Qaeda and led by former Guantanamo detainee Abu Sufyan ben Kumu. Actual witch's brew is uh, Fox News, the Western media, and the military-industrial complex completely destroying the race, civilization, customs, traditions, culture, laws of a country in their blind pursuit of violence and of cheesing of their objectives. This week, the London Telegraph cited Western intelligence reports indicating the Al-Qaeda affiliate in North Africa is now on the move in southwestern Libya to create the space needed for training and planning operations against the West. The Libyan town of Ghat near the Niger border is also a well-known transitioning point for weapons. Again, this well-known transitioning point has only been made available thanks to the NATO destruction of the Libyan armed forces. There's only a very small rebel movement of true democ democracy-seeking peoples. Uh, if this revolution had gone the way of Tunisia or Egypt and had been civil and peaceful, how different things would be today. But instead, we refused to d negotiate with Gaddafi. Obama never met with Gaddafi. Clinton never met with Gaddafi. The African Union was thwarted by the United States. 
And the, so the true witch's brew is a Western military industrial complex, an out of control neocon executive, and a media, all of which are controlled by the same elite, apparently. Top commander for U.S. forces in Africa, General Carter Hamm, told the George Washington University Homeland Security Policy Institute earlier this week that the growth of Islamist movement now appears to be an arc of instability, stretching from Mali and Niger to Somalia and Yemen in the east. All of this brought to you by the United States and NATO rushing in and bombing and destroying the defenses of this country. It must be true joy to people who want to promote arms sales, the military industrial complex in the surveillance state. They must really be rubbing their hands today in preparation for what they're going to be able to do. This entire article takes no responsibility whatsoever for the fact this entire predicament is of our own creation. What I worry about more than anything, though, rather than each of these individual organizations, rather than indeed dangerous and important, it is a growing linkage, growing network, and collaboration and synchronization amongst various extremist organizations, which I think pose the greatest threat to regional stability more broadly across Africa, certainly in Europe, United States as well. This is utter disinformation. We have created this monster, and we take no responsibility for it. It's utterly infuriating. Jocelyn's research strongly suggests that while groups such as Ansar al-Sharia also implicated the consular attack along with al-Qaeda of the Islamic Maghreb publicly distanced themselves from al-Qaeda leadership in Pakistan, there are too many parallels to ignore. None of this existed before the United States invasion. In Libya, they had peace. They had peace for a decade, and they have, were beginning a, a process of rapprochement with the people that they had locked up people they had locked up were right-wing religious extremists such as uh, what we now call Al-Qaeda. And Jocelyn says this means that the Al-Qaeda global jihadist ideology has been adopted within some elements of the Syrian rebels, making it harder if not impossible for the U.S. to identify friendly forces. These forces were driven by the Wahhabi Salafist movement centered in Saudi Arabia and the Gulf Petro monarchies and the Emir of Qatar. These people are war criminals, as is our own government in this entire operation. All of this can be drawn straight back to Samantha Powers, Susan Rice, and Hillary Clinton, either being manipulated by intelligence uh, forces that wanted to see this happen or simply bungling. Since December of last year, there have been more than 50 suicide bombings in Syria, the majority with 41 claimed by al-Nusra. The big takeaway right now is that the U.S. government is not responding to provocative terrorist acts against even our own U.S. diplomats. That shows American weakness around the Muslim world. The big takeaway right now is that this entire situation was effectively created by Fox News' unwillingness to let the American people know what was really going on in Libya and that we should not have bombed the hell out of their country and destroyed their defenses and destroyed their government to uh, lay great suffering on the Middle East and on Africa. My name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck.